Well, I was, uh, I was bringing some promise here last time when I was at least two well, previous times when I was here, trying to bring you the second part of the, my personal journey in a context of putting past behind you. And uh, just last week, I was talking with, uh, with uh, one of the brothers from Korean church, and he told me a story about him being in college, and while he was there, one of his friends pulled a prank uh, on some other guy, and fortunately, prank went wrong, and a young boy died. After investigation, they came up and saying that there is no faults here, it's accident. Uh, family of the deceased really get around the, the boy and they forgive him, try to cater to him. And 20 years later, let me tell you what happened to this young boy who pulled a prank. He got married, had children, had a jobs, about two, three, four, I don't know how he cannot find steady job. Also, he, his whole family and relationship with his wife was down to the wit's end. Reason why? He was holding a grudge to himself for what he did in college. To the point that permeates everything that he was doing. Uh, he permeates his relation with his wife to, to, to his children. He cannot hold a job together just because of one mistake. Lucky for him, the mother of the deceased boy came and visited him and gave him such a nice, gentle talk. I call it whoop, whooping where he got to the point to understand that all his family, family of the, the deceased, don't have no grudge against him. He is forgiven. Go and live your life. When he finally accepts that fact, he gained his wife back, he gained his children back, and he find awesome job He's holding it back and enjoying it. One thing. Is there something in mind in your life that holds us back? And that, what does it mean, putting past behind you? You know, there is a lot of things that really holding us back. Uh, we run our life, we make our decision, we do the best we can to... to live our life, but there, is a th there are things in our life that, that are there, not, not dealt with, that actually having such a hard impact on the way how we live our life and making decisions today. Does this make sense? Does this resound as a true in your life? That doesn't mean putting past behind you. Now, Paul, in the verses that uh, Frank was reading, is saying, forgetting what is behind. He's not that naive to think that I can just not think about that. No, it's the work involved in that. Forgetting means I need to deal with this. Forgetting means I wish that I will tell you, oh, forgive and forget. You know what? That's something from the 60s and 70s, maybe. But it doesn't work that way. We are blessed and cursed with a memory. We have elephant memory. Not that we animals, the, 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 and elephant, but there is something about that grudges that we're holding up. And we are having that uh, uh, power, having that uh, capacity within us to, to hold a memory, and with the memory we attach our feelings. And if we are not dealing with those feelings, we find ourselves repeating same mistake all over again. Not only that, according to that feeling, we are building habits. And it becomes such a normal thing to do what we are doing in our life without even questioning ourselves. And that's why I'm standing here in front of you as a second part of my, of my sermon 
to tell you that this is my personal reflection over my life. How I am dealing with my past. In order for you to have some background, I need to tell you something about myself. And I will try to put it in about less than five minutes. I hope that will work out. I was born in a Montenegro, former Yugoslavia. A uh, homogeneous society means uh, I remember when the pe uh, young man uh, coming to, from Africa for, uh, uh, for university, they were, we were looking and saying, wow, that was like a, like a treat seeing a person like that because you never see it there in my country. What we have there is the population of the Muslims, population majority of the uh, Orthodox Christians, and small population of Catholics. There is a big animosity still in a context of the Orthodox and Muslims. We even have derogatory names for one another. We try to, uh, we actually recognize one another in the street. You will say, what, what, how? But some, somehow uh, people be, uh, uh, recognize one another if you are from Utsis or Tutsis. I'm, I'm referring to Uganda, am I right? Rwanda, Rwanda, yes, I apologize for that, yes. But we know one another, and actually we know how to put one another in place. There is a huge traditional setting there. You, you feel that in the air, just for you to know. My family has genealogy, and I'm about 20 or 21st generation. My son is right there now. And you can see their genealogy. They are actually taking a pride of that. And I, maybe one day I will show you it's like a huge, like, like, a, like a tree. And I, I, there is some pride there, you know, so wow, look at this. But also comes with uh, negative things also. Especially when you're making decision to worship God in a way that is not familiar to the tradition. And you're setting yourself on fire for that. And I, am, I went through that, my sister and I. But that's not the reason why I'm telling you this. The reason why I'm telling you this is I am very unique. And I like to call myself being unique. And I will tell you why. I was born as a third out of four children. First boy, and that was a huge thing in my country. To have a boy is like, wow. Um, and I will maybe explain you that later, why is that important. Uh, it was like a wedding when I got born. Uh, that's what I was told. I was not present there, but obviously it was happening. Um, and uh, my mother had a very hard delivery with me, very rough delivery. And obviously I was not turned properly. And after 24 hours of delivery, doctor decided to do some extreme measures and pull me out with the legs out. By doing so, he dislocated all my hip, hip, hips out. That means I was um, in a cast and those stretchers until my four years old. And I started walking when I was four. Reason why I'm telling you this is because they could not fix that. That means they fixed the left one, but they could not fix the right one. To the point that um, one leg was shorter than the other one. Did you know that? That means when you see me tired, you will see me obviously very much limping. Uh, now I find out there is some nice cobbler in Barry who can make some uh, adjustments on my right foot. Difference between the, the foot now becoming, as I'm growing older, even more and more, because I'm finding that I'm shrinking. Uh, obviously, that's the fact of our natural life and bodies. Now it's about almost two inch difference. And I live with that. Reason why I'm telling you this. You know what happened with the young boy when he comes into the primary school with that uh, uh, uniqueness? What happened with the people who, children who have um, glasses? How they were called? Four eyes, thank you. Now, imagine you coming, unique guy like me, coming with the obvious limp. 
How would you call him? No, no not now. In a primary school. Uh, they, they try to really put everything on you and try to make sure that you know that you are different, that you are not in the same level, that you are somewhere beneath them, and they have a right to tell you that in uh, any words they want. But within me, there was some tenacity that I did not have a problem putting up the fights. I was glad to fight the guys who are a foot taller than me and stronger than me. I came home with the ripped shirts, bloodied. I don't have a problem fight in fight. There is something within me that I just respond that way. I didn't say that I was right, but that's me. Um, also, that bullying constantly uh, somehow offset me in regarding my schooling. I was not a good student. I was actually not a good student. Let me put this way. I don't know what, to, what kind of uh, words, uh, bad one. To the point that, um, and I was very good in hiding it. That means I was using intelligence badly. Until my uh, mother came to school. And that was the end of it. Um, she came and the professor told her straight in the face, saying, uh, my lady, I need to tell you that we thought that this young boy don't have a parents at all. You do not want to tell that to my mom. You do not want to tell that to my mom. And you know what, just please, I know that we live in Canada, and I want you to take this with a grain of salt because our way of how we understand education, and uh, uh, education, not uh, the discipleship. Uh, discipline is a little bit what I, to a certain point, agree. But in my culture, in my tradition, it was something like this. My wife came from the school, and I hope that you, I don't know if you know, but there is an army belt. Um, this wide, long, and she just wrap it up around her right arm, yeah, her fist, hold me by her hand, by my hand, and I was walking on a wolf, trying to escape that belt. And after, I don't know how many was eternity for me, I got that whooping, she left me to be in a, in a, in a room. I thought that that was worst. No, that was not the worst. She came after that in a room and just sit down beside my bed and start crying and talking. Guys, do you know what I was thinking? I've never told this to my mom, but this is what my thoughts is. I said, Mom, can you please beat me more? Just don't talk. <laughs> You're laughing now, but let me tell you background why I was saying that. Because I saw how my action hurt my mom. And in her, uh, in her tears, I saw how much she loved me. And that had such a huge impact on me that little bit by little, I uh, changed. Not to the point I was still picking up the fights. I was in a prison for one day. <laughs> Guilty. But there, God sent police officer, actually. That's another story. Um, to the point that I need to still prove myself, I... I uh, want to do something that no other people will do or can do. I finish a uh, course in parachuting, paragliding. I have a license for the plane, mild, little one, but not here, back in my country. And you know what? How, ask me how I feel when I, when I tell people, I did one, two, three, four. You know. <laughs> Why? I want to add something to myself that is... That is uh, unique for me. Until I met Jesus Christ and he told me how unique I am. Because of his love and grace and his mom, my mom, and that 
police officer and a couple of other people, I am standing here as a proof there is a God in heaven. There is a way to put a past behind you, but that's not me just forgetting it. No, forgetting it involves a work. It involves a work. Now, let me share this with you, and it will be personal because the, there is a couple of steps I would like to share with you and uh, some points and see if this is something that you can apply in your life. I gain freedom. I gain being vulnerable. Do you think it's easy for me to talk about this? It is easy. You know what? Because I speak about this every time. It's easy. I don't hold this as easy. It's, it's a blessing. Why? I will tell you that later. Because I put Jesus in my past. Past does not have a hold of me. Past I'm using as a teaching tool. It's not anchor. Past is not an anchor that is dragging me. I cannot go forward. Past is like a rudder that telling me and I'm telling and I'm, and I'm moving my boat left and right. What are you doing with your past? And let me share with you a couple of points I, I have in my mind. Choose healing, number one. You think this is such an easy thing to do? Get in a line. It's not easy. Look what happened with uh, Peter and Judah. There is something unique about human nature. We need to hit the rock bottom in order for us to learn the lesson. It will be wise for us to listen and to, and to um, uh, somehow respond to the experience of other people. But even though we listen, it's very hard for us to respond until we find our own experience. And when we come down there, we respond like Peter. He got warned, he got trained, schooled by, by Jesus. Judah, Jesus, all his three and a half year of ministry is saying, Judah, I, I, I know that you love me. I don't want you to open your mind. Judah loved Jesus intellectually. Jesus, he wants, he, he really loved what he saw in Jesus. That's why Jesus told me, Judah, please don't open your mind to me. Open your heart. Open your heart to me. But Judah, to the, when he hit the rock the bottom, he make a choice. And he end up on tree. On the other side, Peter, when he hit the rock bottom, he chose the healing. Ellen White explains that beautifully in the, in the Desire of Ages. When Jesus was leaving the court, their eyes met. And at that point, Ellen White stated that he recognized unconditional, non-judgmental love came from that look. Just a small little look. And Rooster has his song. And he breaks. And we know what happened with the Peter. We need to choose deliberately to find our place in a place where we respond to what we know that God is asking for us to do. We need to have that courage to, to uh, respond to the teaching we have. And this is something that I would like you to, to remember. Right now, I really have a I think it's a blessing from God that he granted me to have that. It's a faith that uh, everything that happened in my life is uh, given to me by God. I don't believe in coincidence. I love the promises in the Bible. That's how I encourage myself. There is one in Isaiah 43 saying, if you pass through the waters, if you pass through the fires, I will be there. That means, you know what that means? I, I have you in the palm of my hand. Thank God that God's hand is not like mine. It's, his territory is big. That means it doesn't matter what I do, he will always have me on his side. He's there, he's protecting me, even from the things that I, 
assume are out of control. I have that firm promise from God that He is the one who is defining me, who is protecting me. And when I choose a healing, I'm just responding to what I know of who God is. That's why people rather recover, rarely recover from the emotional pain until they want recovery more than anything else. Obviously, we need to come to that point for us to want and to desire healing. Even the man who was 35, 38 years in a pool of batches that was there dying, he had an unbelievable vicious circle in his mind about unhealthy mental processing. That Jesus was telling him, hey, you need to stop doing that in order to get a healing. And when he said, yes, you remember what happened to him. Next one I would like to share with you is a look past in the eye. This requires courage. Because sometimes in that past is something we do not want to meet. There is some traumatic experiences that we don't want to touch. I, I visit one lady with uh, Pastor Sam last week. And let me tell you, as soon as you asking that woman about, oh, how is your family? I don't want to talk about that. About, uh, family, I don't want to talk about that. What I know about counseling is as soon as a person said something like that, that is traumatic experience. They don't want to go there. Why? They want to be always positive. But that's not life. For me, it's a hiding. You need to meet reality in life. You need to meet past the way how it is portrayed for you in your life. You cannot hide all the way because it will catch upon you. And Satan knows that. Having courage to look past in the eye, to face the reality, to seek uh, authentic knowledge about that past is the way to go. Finding that courage is something that we can only do because of who God is. Indirectly, I was involved with a lady who was a teacher, psycho, psycho teacher, I don't want to go into the details, but she was a teacher of psycho, psychology in one of the, in Toronto here. And very successful uh, in what she was doing, but marriage, relationship uh, with her husband and what she went through was atrocious. What she received from that man, it was uh, beyond any scope of reason. But on the other side, her, her uh, career was excellent. You can see that she was hiding herself in her career because she didn't know what, what to do with this. Her husband passed away. She went to retire. And suddenly she went to the supermarket to buy something. And suddenly right there and there, she started bawling and scream and just fell down. Because her mind was telling her, hello lady. It's time to deal with this. That means all her life, she was hiding herself in being busy. Don't tell me that we don't have busy life. Hiding herself to busy, not to deal with the realities that she needs to deal with. And brain has unbelievable, today really science discovering such amazing thing about our brain. Her brain just asked her, hey, Lady, we need to deal with this. And because of unbelievable amount of emotion, she just responded. And she dealt with it. Take her, took her time. But guess what? She is operational. She is kicking and screaming, the way how I call it. She really gained, uh, um, gained uh, some footing on her anxieties and the past. Looking past in the eye requires a courage requires work done, 
requires for us to roll up a sleeve and find out a way how to bring those traumatic experiences on forefront. I know it's not hard, it's easy because it's emotions and we do not want to deal with it. We are not um, capable or not capable, we are capable, but we are not courageous enough to deal with that because there are lots of hurts. Some of us, we are maybe raped. Some of us, we are in pornography. Some of us, we are in drugs, uh, alcohol. Why? There is a reason why we're doing that. Just we don't have a courage to face that reality. Reason why becoming a habit is becomes not natural for us to do that. Why it's become natural? Because of running away from, from the dealing with the past, we develop certain habits in order to choke the thing. It takes a courage. And God said, I am here with you. you. I am courageous. Lean on me. I can give you that strength. That means it's very much important for us to know that God is one who can help us to gain the courage to look past in the eye. Also, we need to acknowledge a pain that comes from things that we cannot have control over. I cannot control what comes from you. I cannot control words that comes from you. That's not what God gave me. But what I can control is how I respond to it. Only way for me to respond in such a way is knowing who my God is. And number three is in order for me to respond in such a way is to know what my value is in God. Oh my, boy, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that I love about my God. Because when he told me how awesomely he loved me, how, what he did for me on the cross. That changed my life, but also gave me stability. Give me always area for me to lean on. I never rely on myself, because why? Bible told me that nothing good lives within me. But when I invite Jesus Christ, that's the only things, the thing that is good within me. Discover your value in a God's eyes. That is very important. And as I said, requires, uh, requires tremendous strength of character to look past in the eye. And Bible teaches us about person and his love for us. What an awesome God we have. But discovering our, collecting a courage to look past in the eye, to discovering our value in, uh, in uh, God's eyes does not come outside of the community. We are not born in vacuum. We are born in community. That means we are, sur we are surrounded by other people. Blessings that we receive does not come alone, comes in a community comes from community and I'm rich because I have awesome family in front of me. Let me tell you, I am, I am grateful to God to be in Villadale. It's awesome community because somewhere where I am weak, I know that I have a person that I can rely on. Wherever I can, I know that Pastor uh, Kevin will be there for me. Pastor God, so we, I love the team that we have. But also I know there is a person with, in my family here that I can rely on. Look at it and say, hmm, I love parenting they are doing. And I can always look and ask for advice. Blessing comes by understanding that, uh, that uh, support is not coming only from Holy Spirit. Coming from you. And in order for me to put past behind you is me engaging you in my life. And that brings another being vulnerable. And that is hard. Hard to be vulnerable. 
For me, coming here in front of you, I put myself to the point for young people who are here to know that they are not alone. I've been there, done that. I didn't do drugs, but I did things that young men can do. And I, you know that, that I, I, I've been there, done that enough for you to say, maybe I can ask Pastor Jake. Imagine you coming from your part of the world, from your experience, and you and young people have that freedom to say, hmm, let me ask Brother Oscar. Hope that I'm right. Uh, or, or Sister... Uh, Marva, I apologize. I, I knew that for sure. Um, I said because of her experience. That's what it is. That's what I love this, this thing of warm up because I want to know who you are, what, what I can count on in my life. Again, let me tell you, I am selfish. Why? Why? Because the blessings that come from you. Actually, it puts you in position to be a guide to me and help me, which, which puts you in position to be used by Holy Spirit. But also, it helped me to gain footing in my life. That's what family is doing. That was a community is all about. It's not baptism that makes us part of it. It's desire to ask and to share and to be loved and accepted and to be par part of it. It's very important for us to know that. Seek and support or guidance. L let me give you one Bible example. Lazarus, when he came out from the grave, what how Bible, what Bible said? You can imagine, he was wrapped up in what? Could he take that by himself? The stone was on a, on a, on a grave. Uh, was angels were, were taking the stone or who took the stone away? People. Who unwrapped Lazarus? Angels or people? I cannot do anything without community. And imagine now that when you wrap, when you put that wrap out, it's like an onion, peeling onion. And all that, that linen that was around Lazarus represent all that layers of anxieties, of phobia, of fears that we have. And guess what? In order for me to gain a footing in my spiritual life, physical life, I need you to help me. Blessing from God comes from and through community. You cannot be not involved in my life. And mine in yours. That was community is. If you want to gain a, 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 a blessing over your past, you need to be engaged. You need to find yourself being open. Where people will have an impact on you. But because of a lot of hurts that happened in our life, well, you know what, what happened? And when I come on Sabbath... Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. And first thing that I can, I, there is still a tremendous uh, hurts in the past that we need to deal with. But that requires a courage. One that I very much love is tell your story over, over, over. And if I didn't say it enough, over again. Why? Because if we are not talking about how God helped us in the past, help us through these traumatic experiences, that past experiences will have a hold on us, will shape our decision today, will create a habit to support that anxieties. That's why having courage to be open with that. When I was 12 years old, I was raped by so-and-so. You know what? It takes a courage. Am I right to say that? But imagine some young person here quietly going through that. You become just available to that person to come to you. 
I was into pornography when I was in my 30s. You know what? There is someone right here who might have that issue. I have an unbelievable fits of rage. My wife is scared of me, but I cannot hold it. I, I am full of rage. Guess what? There was someone who was having that. And I know some my brother, and I would like you to talk to him. That's what community is. Being open about your past and talking about that, preparing you to be used for someone who is struggling in that regard. But Satan also knows that and, took, and he's taking a number on us. Finding a way to just lock us in, in our way of living our life, living our anxieties, not living by God's God gospel, living our anxieties. Because our anxieties and phobias and the traumatic experiences live our life. Because of them, we create a habit. Because of them, we create a, a lifestyle around us. But imagine gaining a freedom in Jesus Christ. Imagine having that experience saying, God, I am here. I, I need your help. I need some guidance regarding this is what happened to me. I don't know what to do with this. It's constantly bother me. It's the way to go. Act upon your past and go forward. Take from someone like me. Still struggling with that. But I know who is my God. I know the value that I receive in Him. Do I still struggle? Well, Welcome to my club. That's a part of, 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 of living, yes. And one of the last ones that I would like to share with you is invite Jesus in your traumatic experience. Invite Jesus in your traumatic experience. Now, what does that mean? It means that you deliberately, intentionally find courage to visit that and ask questions. Ask, ask really hard questions. What Jesus would say to this person who hurt me? How this event will affect Jesus if he is on my place? Bringing Jesus there, it's the first thing for us to gain a footing over that traumatic experience. doesn't matter what, what is it. Because working with the police very often... I can tell you that people are unbelievably sheltered themselves with a certain lifestyle they have in order to avoid things that happened in their past. They 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 calling their they are um, choosing their mates, their boyfriend and girlfriend because of the past. One lady that I have Bible study in Sudbury, she just divorced. She was 50 years old. No, I'm lying. 40, 42, 3 years old. She, developed, she did, divorced her husband. And when I was talking about Bible study, about God's character, how, you know me, I'm very passionate. So God loves you, and I was so into it. You know me, I, I, was, I become red, blue, green to explain my love and God's character. And she looked through me. You know that when you talk to someone, you have that uh, idea that they are physically there, but they are not there. They are through you, they are looking at you, but somewhere, you know that thousand kilometer stair, thousand mile stair? And uh, on the end, I, I said, okay, did you understand this lesson? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I like a lesson, but I don't understand it. Because I don't understand how parent can be loving. And she opened and she told me that her mother was such an abusive person and her father did not have a backbone to protect her. To the point that when she get out of the house, she find an abusive person. Do you see the pattern? If 
we don't bring Jesus in those traumatic events, we will find ourselves con con continuing or doing the same mistake all over again. Why? Because we did not have a courage to properly put Jesus in those traumatic experiences. Let me tell you, I am a counselor. I, I, I love psychotherapy. I, I love that. But sometimes that's, there is too much of that. I believe that you as a person know what is best for you. And I believe when, in counseling that I'm doing, I, live, I believe in journey. I am there to hold a person and just journey with that person in her, in, in her or his um, traumatic experience. And just, just ask questions. Listen and ask. That means I don't believe in psychotherapy, I believe in journey with a person where you asking questions and guide that person. You can be the one to one another. I can be that to you if it's needed. That's why community is there. Bringing Jesus is the healing palm of Gilead. Is that balm of Gilead for everyone who is asking. But we need to have a courage to bring that thing up. So what is your story? What what put you down in your life? What's stopping you to be more effective man and woman of God in your, in your life? Is there anything that drives you back? Do not let God do His power in your life. What's your story? What's holding you back? Where, what is your anchor in the past that's not let you go forward? I'd like to give you just a moment to reflect because this is important. This is for me where the, my, my growing continue, grow, start to grow, grow or it stops. I cannot find myself, call myself spiritual person if I am not properly assessing my past and going forward. That's why I'm here to challenge you because only thing that can happen is I will have some uh, tomatoes from you uh, hitting me from this side. But I'm, I'm ready to do, to do that because I want to challenge you because this is what it's all about. I don't want you to remember this Sabbath because I want you to remember this Sabbath as a, as a Sabbath that you are challenged. There is a better way. There is something better that God has in store for you. That's why my question to you, what is your story? And while we're singing our song, 647, six, 647, I would like you to, I want to give you time. I want to pray for you. While we're singing a song, I want you to be courageous, be bold, to come here, because I would like to pray for you. And I would like to call uh, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Sam to come and join me because we would like to surround you. We would like to pray for you, for the strength, for courage, to, to uh, see the life for what it is, to be bold in claiming God's promises. That's why let's sing 647, and while we're having a song, song, be courageous. Come and join me here in front, if God prompt your heart to do so. Thank you that we can... Find the courage within us to recognize there are events on our, in our life that still, Lord, are unresolved and has a huge impact in the way how we live our life with you. Lord, we don't know. I don't know what is it. But each of us is unique because each story is unique because we are unique. And I'm asking you, Lord, for the people who came here and forward to bless them according to your words, to give them courage to pursue, Lord, those events, God, they are dreading to think of. But give them a courage, Lord, to visit them with you. You instill yourself. Give them a victory over things that still have a hold on on them. And Satan is really 
they're doing a number on us, God. Because it's holding us where we are totally inactive. We don't have no influence in our, on our friends, in our families. Because of anxiety is God that's ruling our life. And we are asking you for forgiveness. And asking you for strength to continue, Lord, going towards you. Bless us, God, as we stand in front of you. Guide us. Give us this discernment to know what to do. And for us to gain a victory according to your mercy, love, and grace that you promised to us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.